Good morning everyone, it's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video. And it's a new day, I have slept pretty well after my trip from Vegas, and now it is time to get back to the grind, and that grind will start with Diablo's Showcase. So Despair Time Diablo came out a couple days ago, and he looks to be a very, very powerful nuker, and uh, with the special ability to temporarily cleanse debuffs, so we'll, you know, I'll try and make that as useful as possible. Uh, there's just not a lot of places to use that. But going over him really quick, he's dark, he's physical, he uses a claw. I do have an enchanted claw on him, so just keep that in mind when we're, when we're doing damage output. He does have, I think, 24% synergy power. Uh, 12 here, 6 crit damage, and another 2. Yeah, so 24% synergy power added on to his damage, since the commander team is synergy based. And then he is a single target ult, 490%. His first skill is a massive 100% attack and 40% synergy power. His second skill is the cleansing state that also stacks weakness resistance down and rushes his own ult gauge. So we'll definitely take a look at that. Bower trait is useless, and his actual trait, if you have dupes, is protection gauge every three turns. But with that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so starting off, we're going to put him on the commander team, Renard, Diablo, Hinata, Glenda, and Shizu. We were previously using Light Lumi because she had the light buff and the green orb change for turn one, but now that we're no longer nuking with New Year's Rimuru, we're nuking with Dark Diablo, uh, light buff wouldn't make a whole butt ton of sense. So we have brought Dark Shinsha in, who... On her turn 8, her dark buff goes up to 70%, so it is better than the second anniversary Hinata. And her second skill uh, lowers crit resistance, which isn't really a thing here, but also gives us more skill points on orbs, which can definitely help out with a point-hungry team. It's just that turn 1, we will only have the Hinata orb change, and that could make RNG a little bit terrible. So I'm going to come back on turn 2 once we're able to progress past that, because that's where... I'm going to get stopped a lot. So turn one, we'll just use the Hinata orb change to cover the double greens. And then if we get a good hand, I'll bring you guys back. Okay, well, here's a terrible uh, thing about using Hinata, who doesn't have that 10% gauge increase, is that we don't have 50 points on turn two. Otherwise, we could have used Hinata's orb change again with this hand, and we would have been fine. So highly, highly unfortunate. We also are missing out on a double stack of Bernard right here. If I had a dupe of Hinata, we'd be talking a different story, but I don't. I might get one out of the Starstone shop, but not a big deal. So we're just going to put the stack on... Uh, we'll get Hinata out of here. We'll put the stack on these three, and then we'll just send the Shizu orbs, since they're literally all Shizu. And we can just clear our hand a bit, get rid of these greens, orange, and orange... Or green, greens, and orange, and we'll get this blue out of here. And hopefully now we have enough points to do something next turn. Hopefully. Uh, perfect. Okay. That that will work. So, we've got the shield up. We've got Hinata. We're only on Inferno 1, by the way. Nothing too terrible. Uh, he doesn't have 4 million HP, and he also doesn't have that super strong shield. But we're still going to take advantage of this, just to see how much our normal attacks do now that we've been stacking a bit. Um, Shinsha, I think, has to come in for Hinata again, because it's coming up on turn 4. Yeah, okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now, Diablo being dark. Like, we saw the videos where I was using New Year's Rimuru, right? And he was doing 7 million. Like, that's a lot of damage. If I can get the run with this, he's gonna Diablo's going to do a literal butt-ton more, because he's now dark. All right, counters everywhere. Uh, that's, uh, that's certainly a hand right there. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't have to stack on Hanada, so let's just do this. Um, we've got points, so let's go ahead and use the orb change with Shizu, and then we can get her out of here for Hinata. That'll pull that orange in, and then we can just use Hinata's orb change now, as expensive as it's going to be. But we can start stacking with uh, Shinsha's debuff, all souls skill point increase until the end of battle. Although, actually, I don't think that actually takes effect, because we've already at 100. Hold on. Uh... Yeah, yeah, no, it, it doesn't take effect because we're already overcapping that with uh, Renard. So, okay, so her skill is useless, actually. Don't mind me. 
Let's go ahead and put this uh, Lord's Wisdom debuff on now, because we have. We have a debuff, a magic debuff. It doesn't really affect Diablo, but I do want to see this in action. So we will apply this. He'll give himself a free 30% alt gauge. Boom. And now you can see that the red debuff is now off. And if we go look at it, it's there. Because we have the Lord's Wisdom status. So in two turns, this will go away. And this red debuff will come back because it's forever. And so it saves you for just the turn limit that it has. It does not completely cleanse you of all debuffs and then, you know, you never get it reapplied or anything. It is just a temporary state where you are just not debuffed and it will go away. But it is Rush Result. And then after this turn is over, we should be able to see he's at 30% alt resistance down. He and, oh, actually, no, this is a different thing. So he's going to have... 50, no, he's going to have, yeah, 60% because this is staying. Yeah, we'll just, we'll test, we'll take a look at it. It passively stacks weakness resistance down on the enemy every turn that you have the status up. So you don't have to spam the skill to get it. It should just apply. So after the enemy's turn is over, weakness, there you go, decrease. So now this should be up to 60%. And. Okay, well, it's 50, and then there's another 10 right here. So there you go. So this is the temporary one you get from breaking the shield. This is the permanent one. And we didn't have to do anything, right? We don't have to reapply the status again. It's already active. And while it's active, at the end of Benny Mara's this coming turn, he will also take another 10% weakness resistance down. And, you know, that, that's pretty handy right there. This hand is also not that great, because I can't handle three greens, unfortunately. Well, actually, I can. Uh, actually I can. Alright, let's get Shinsha out of here since her skill is useless then. That's not the right unit that I wanted to pull out. <sighs> Damn it. Uh, okay. Well, that's pretty unfortunate right there. Let's come back. I want to see full power Diablo. Okay, we're back on turn four. We didn't break the shield last turn because we didn't use the, um, the Hinata, uh, convert but now we will we've got the lord's ambition already active this is the second turn see it's blinking so we're, he already has an extra 10 percent weakness resistance down right here so we're looking pretty good we got a full hand and as long as we can continue this we're going to be easy peasy lemon squeezy i don't know why i keep saying that now um but i mean he's doing 20 20k 26k i can't really tell uh yeah he's doing about 20k a hit that's pretty good all right that's a good hand right there Awesome. Glenda will be able to swap his alt away, and then we'll just use Sonata's orb change. So boom, and boom. And now you see that the Lord's Ambition state has left us, and the red debuff has come back. So that, you know, again, it doesn't just auto-cleanse you. It's not like a full heal, full potion, full restore from Pokemon, right? Heals all statuses and uh, heals all HP. It's not quite like that. It's just a temporary, you know, debuff removal. And then it, the debuff will come back. But now we have 20% weakness resistance down on the enemy. And that is, you know, it's f almost free. Again, this debuff doesn't matter to Diablo because he's not magic. But hey, extra damage is always a welcome thing that we can get out of here. And we're going to get his EX ult right here, which is fantastic. And then we just need three more turns before we get some big, big time nuking power here. And I expect to nuke very 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 high numbers with this diablo because of it wow okay thank you game i really appreciate that actually um he's he his personal buff is very strong and you know i might not care about this diablo because he doesn't bring a lot to other characters but i i will not deny that he does have a lot of power coming out of him you know a hundred percent attack is nothing to scoff at yeah i know we kind of made fun of Exalted Champion Rimuru with a 70% attack, and yes, attack is not the greatest just single buff in the world, but it is a 100% attack buff, and we cannot just overshadow that. Wow, this game is really, really treating me well here on Orb RNG. Okay, and then his second skill, it's like, the cleanse doesn't have a lot of use, the alt rushing is good for a blue stacking team, um... And the, it's just kind of, the weakness resistance, I mean, yes, in a way you could say that it's a support skill. I really wouldn't put it like that, though. It's just, 
something else to help him do extra damage. Like, I wouldn't bring this Diablo on another team as a support character just for that one thing. Because there are other characters who will bring a lot more power and support that we don't have to... Wow, is that three or four hands in a row of just a Hinata orb change? That's actually incredible. Okay. Um, the shield is broken. He does have his own weakness resistance. Uh, broken down here for two turns. There is a notification in the news that says that uh, beatdown battle, this debuff right here, doesn't actually work. And I don't know if that covers both this one and Diablo's. That's up to 40% stack. I, I do not know, uh, but I guess we'll find out anyways. But we are ready to nuke. Let's get these last two stacks of Renard on, and let's see how much damage this Diablo is going to put out in in quote-unquote optimized team build. So let's do the Synergy and Physical Resistance down. Let's get Shinsha in here. I wonder, do we have enough points to do everything here? 80 there. I Yeah, no we do. All right, cool. And then we'll use the Diablo buff, the Hinata buff, the Shizu buff. And that's all the points we have to work with. We'll take a look at our stats right now. It's going to be pretty dang high. So Diablo's rocking 190% alt damage. And then his actual stats, he's got 120% weakness strike, guaranteed synergy, 70% dark attack, 100% attack, 40% synergy power, 100% physical attack. And then the debuffs on Benny Maru is alt resistance down 100, weakness resistance down 40, that's from the Lord's Ambition. We've got defense and weakness resistance here, this is from the Breaking the Shield. And then we've got physical down, dark down, and synergy down. So, let's make sure that his animation is on. This is the first time using him ever, actually. Uh, so, I don't... I'm, this shouldn't have to be here. But, we're going to do it anyways. Let's see how much damage our normal orbs do first. And then, we'll send the nuke. I'm thinking... Oof, about... 12 to 13 million damage. I think. We'll see how correct I am on that. Alright, so 388k a hit, that is some hefty, hefty normal orb damage. 388,000 for one orb. Okay. Alright, time for some despair time. time. It's despair time. Okay, whatever, however I want to say that, and just crush it. And he does... Was that... that was 16 million? It was 16 million damage. We gotta check that. Hold on. All right, that uh, that actually was 16.3 million damage. Now remember, I do have that 24% extra synergy power fist enchantment on, so that is going to account for a hefty buff. That's more than half of what we're already getting from just the skills in general. So I think if you were to not have an enchanted weapon and you were running just a normal level 100 Diablo with a normal like six star awakened dark fist, you'd probably be doing somewhere closer to 15 ish million damage, maybe a little bit more than that. I don't know if 24% is going to cover a million damage, but certainly like that, that's a lot of damage. 16 million on one team with you know. The full meta, yeah. And Dark Shinsha is a super old character. She's She came out for the first anniversary. Like, she's a character that people will have access to if they've been playing for a reasonable amount of time off of, you know, the free tickets or something like that. She's in every banner. It's not like she's a limited time collab unit like Overlord Shizu or something, or Shizuka. You know, other strong support characters. So, and, you know, Shinsha's dark skill is not skill-fused. Uh, it's just 70%. And then the 10% uh, Dark Resistance down. That's a very, very powerful showing of Diablo. 16 million will clear anything in the game. Straight up. This like, this beatdown battle, Inferno 3, has almost 4 million. That's the highest HP boss we've ever had in the game. So, if 4 million is the highest, 16 million? Please. Uh, yeah. Diablo is good for damage. Big time damage. And that's great if you need big time damage. Let's put him on some other teams now. All right, we're going to put him on the Exalted Champion team. We're going to go into the Dark Tempered Edge versus Gazel, a very old stage, but, you know, Diablo is dark. The thing about putting him on the Exalted Champion team is that we are running 
the buffs that he already gives himself, right? So, Rimuru, for how much we meme on him, is giving 70% attack. Yeah, it's 30% less than Diablo, but it's also 15 points you know, lo lower cost. And then Guy is giving Primal Demons guaranteed synergy and 40% synergy power, which is what Diablo is giving himself, is synergy power by 40%. So, I mean, we can you can put him on this team if you need a dark character and you want to run a green team. You just don't really need to use his skill. And um, as far as his Lord's Ambition skill, it's like... I, I guess you can to rush his ult. I mean, that's cool. We're going to bring the hero so we can steal three orbs that are hopefully, you know, buffed greens into Diablo, and that'll cover his EX ult anyways. Uh, you know, he, he's good on the commander team because the commander team isn't buffing what he already does to himself. Other teams already have attack buffers. They already have some synergy power way of getting it or something like that. So Diablo's buffs are a bit unnecessary on this specific team build because we're already getting it for lower points. It's a lower effect, certainly, but you know that not a truly horrible big deal either. So we'll just send these, and then we'll leave the hero and Diablo in the back, and we'll just hopefully steal some. Uh, this turn really doesn't matter. We just want to get points so we can use the green buff and the steal. And, you know, this stage doesn't have a lot of HP. He has, like, 300-something thousand, maybe. Maybe a bit more than that. Not by much. Uh, perfect. Actually, wow, yeah. Alright. So, let's go ahead and apply the green buff from Veldora. Now, the thing about Diablo being dark is that Guy cannot rush his ult, right? He has, Diablo has to rush his own ult, because Guy only rushes wind and space, and Diablo is neither of those. So, unfortunate... But it is what it is. We'll bring the hero in for Guy. We'll go ahead and yoink all those orbs. Boom. And then we'll bring Diablo in. And we will use Velzard to convert all these to green. Give him the 50% element buff. And, I mean, he... Gazzle might just die here. <laughs> he might just die. I mean, we could use the attack buff right now. I kind of want to do that next turn. Uh, oh, almost an, alt, or an EX alt for Diablo. Alright, well, let's use the Lord's Ambition then and rush it. Boom. So now he's got 30% just baseline. And there we go. That's his EX ult. We have this on, so Gazel's gonna get that 10% uh, weakness resistance down effect, and then we can nuke with Diablo next turn. I mean, we have enough points. We have another Velzard. We're gonna have 130, so we've got enough to use both Rimuru and Guy to give us the attack buff and synergy buff, and then you know we'll reapply Velzard. So boom. And again, we don't need to reapply the Lord's Ambition. We weren't getting debuffed really anyways. We'll bring Veldora in. The magic debuff is still on as well. Yep. And Synergy. Boom. I mean, if I wanted to, I, I could use the Rush, because it does have that 10% resistance down, and, you know, we're not going to use anything else here, so let's just pile on the damage. And let's take out EX3 Gazzle in, you know, three turns with Diablo, using only one of his skills and not his buff. Let's see how much his normal orb does, and we'll finish it up. 38k, and then... And we don't have to watch this again. Yeah, 279, right? I mean, no, it's not 16 fucking million damage, but is it enough to take out the stage? Yes. Is it putting him on a team that a lot of people will probably have because a lot of people summon for the Exalted Champion 2.5 Anniversary team? Yes. Can he work on that team? Yes. He can. It's just that you're not really using him to his personal full potential because we didn't use his big time buff. It's too expensive for this burst team, and we've already got the buffs at a certain percentage covered with other units. So, you know, again, you, you can slam him onto a team like this. He's not working at full capacity, though. Alright, for the final part, we're going to go into EX5 of Veldora. Tempered Edge. He's got, you know, a decent amount of HP. 1.7 million. We're gonna run him on a Fount of Wisdom, quote-unquote, team with, you know, Protector Diablo. New Diablo is on Fount of Wisdom, so he will be getting, you know, the physical buffs. He'll be getting everything. We've got Albus and Rimuru here. We've brought Glenda, because we need an alt swapper, and we need someone to give Diablo synergy rate. And then we've got guy who will cover our turn one orb change give us alt damage and guaranteed crits which actually we don't really want here now that i'm thinking about it uh i might swap him for megamine we'll uh we'll see actually you know what i think i will swap for megamine hold on 
Okay. We're still getting the same thing, it's just the orb change for Megamine and Gaius flipped, and then we just don't have crits. So, I mean, and we don't want crits. And Megamine is uh, perfectly fine. She's not available to everybody, so, I mean, if you have to use Gaia, you have to. You just will pull Diablo out and then use the alt buff and then bring it in. Alright, well... Let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. I have no doubt in my mind that this Diablo, with combined with all the other buffs we're getting, is going to murder this Veldora, but it will probably take the full eight turns, so I might super speed through this. I don't know. Alright, so turn one, we are dropping in. We'll use Megamine's Orb Change. You know, now that it has the extra 10% gauge increase, you know, we're looking pretty good. We're going to get a double stack of Diablo turn 2, which will be very helpful. Alt resistance down is a very powerful buff. And turn, ah, sorry, turn 2, we actually get pretty lucky. We have 50 points now, again, because of the gauge increase, which means that we can use both Rimuru and um, Albus's orb change. Uh... In case you're still watching this and you ever question why I don't, uh, I know that Light Lumi, Water Shuna, they have the triple orb change for 30 points, and people are like, why don't you skill fuse it? Well, this is exactly why. Because most of the time I only need two, and I would rather it be 25 points, because then I would have the capability of using two orb changes uh, on turn two, rather than you know having Shuna here and being 30 points, and then me not having enough to do both orb changes here. That's the reasoning why I don't skill fuse Lumi, or Space Velzard, or Water Shuna. And that's just a personal preference. If you're fine with it, then, you know, it's your account, be my guest, but I personally would prefer to have the viability of using two skills on turn two instead of one. So here, uh, we do have enough points, 158, because we did have a full hand of blue last turn, so we can use Rimuru, and then we'll bring Megamine back in. And, you know, Diablo is able to rush his ult. Which is going to be very helpful here, because blues do not give us a lot of alt gauge, unless we put a charm on for extra alt gauge on blues, which we're not running. We're running um, protection gauge on blues, because Diablo is the very first EX blue stacking protector. He is kind of old. He only stacks like 30 points and 30 skill cap at a turn. Uh, it's you know not as good as modern day protectors, I guess. Modern day stacking. But we'll use Albus Orb Change, and then, you know, thank god we brought free-to-play Glenda here. He's She's going to work very, very well for any blue stacking team. I think her showcase is still yet to go up, but I actually do like this character. If not, you know, her commander buff being a little limited, the fact that you have a double Orb Changer for a blue stacking team is going to be very, very big. You know, we had free-to-play Gobta, who did a single alt swap, and the Orb Change, that's very, very generically good for a lot of players, and adding another generically good free-to-play unit is, I think, a step, more steps in the right direction. But let's go ahead and do this. We have the Lord's Ambition on. We activated it last turn because I wanted alt gauge. And here, if we do this, we only have one Diablo orb. It's turn six. And if we send all these, we're not actually going to get it. So we're going to use it again because I want that 30%. Using it again doesn't automatically give us extra um, weakness resistance down, on Diablo, it's still going to be the 10% at the end of every turn, and it means nothing here because we're not type advantage, so it doesn't mean anything, but I was able to get the Diablo EX alt, and that's the important thing. So two more stacks from Protector Diablo, we have 280 points, and we don't have enough to use all of our buffs. This is a pretty point-heavy team, everybody's got a big, big-time skill, so we're doing math right there, and, you know, we've got... 8, 16, 24 on this line. We've got Megamine's 80, and then we have, you know, Glenda's 55. So we're going to have to use something a bit early and pray that we can orb change his hand. So we're going to use Diablo's buffs because they are both personal buffs. We can hold them in the back, his attack buff and his synergy power. We can move him away, and we can bring him back on turn 8, and he will still have those, which is great. And now we've got a perfect hand. So orb change with Megamine, orb change with Albus. That's a full hand of blues. This won't max us out, but it'll get us very, very close. Yeah, it's going to get us 318, and that is enough points because we used one 80-point skill early uh, from Diablo. And now, even though we're doing one damage a hit, his defense is leaving, his physical resistance is leaving, we've got one more stack of Diablo to go, and we've got triple alts, technically. And both Rimuru and Albus have effects that will help Diablo out. So we'll do the alt buff with Megamine, it affects the back line as well, so we'll bring Diablo in for her, and then we'll put Glenda's buff on, and the Pierce buff on, which we 
Probably could have held the Pierce buff and put it on Rimuru as well. Not really a big deal. He's not the focus of this team. And then we'll use his buff and we've got 23 points left over. And we'll send Rimuru because he's got defense down by 5% and Albus is 5% Pierce power. Both things will help Diablo. So we'll send their alts first. He has 1.75 million because we were doing literal one damage the entire time except for turn one. So Rimuru does 82k. Alright, awesome. Albus does 263 Great, but then Diablo comes in with 1.5 million. Type neutral, with an old team, uh, you know, not super weak points or anything, and still was able to do 1.5 million. And it's, you know, besides Megamine, who you could easily replace for Guy, and just not, and, you know, do what we did here, is use the all buff and then bring Diablo in, that way he doesn't have the crit. This team would have run the exact same way, and it would have done a, actually a bit more damage, because we'd have the EX boards. Uh, for all physical, he would have done like 1.7 or something like that. Peanuts, but, you know, these units are, besides Diablo, is old, right? The very first EX meta, Rimuru, Albus, Diablo, Glenda is the current free-to-play unit. If you don't have Megamine, just use Guy. He's been featured on a literal butt-ton of banners lately, uh, so it's not like he's been unavailable. And then new Diablo. So, if you are trying to make Diablo the DPS focus of your team, then it, it certainly works out very well. But he's that's his only point. And that's the same problem with most DPS characters, is that they most of them, quote-unquote, don't bring much value to future teams. There are exceptions to that. Like, Milam is a Valor Cup powerhouse, and she has been since she came out in August, right? Um... Jean, she has massive support buffs, and she has her own personal synergy power buff, and that's great. And we used her to very good um, uh, support levels on the Primal Demon team because she was giving 170% alt damage to Blanc or Diablo. You know, there are DPS characters that can support. This Diablo is not one of those characters. And so if you already have a blue team, if you have the Primal Demon team, Yes, he is another Primal Demon. He would work fairly well on that team, sure. Um, but, I mean, if you are set, and the only things that you can't beat is like Inferno 3 of any beatdown battle that comes out every month, and you can't really score too high on Jubilee, but you also don't give a crap about Jubilee, and your blue team wipes everything, you only need Diablo, right? He's not going to bring you any immediate value, and he's not going to bring you uh, he's not going to bring you any future value on other teams where he is not the focused damage character cuz he doesn't support and you're going to have a dps for whatever meta 2 3 months down the line that's going to be better than him on that specific team diablo does 16.7 million on the commander team because he's meant to do 16 million on the commander team he's not meant to do that on um, visions of coleus who he's not giving he, you know it's magic focused and he's not stacking anything Warrior's Mind, he's not on that. So, uh, there are limitations to this Diablo. So while his damage looks fantastic, his overall viability outside is not so great. Um, so, so, I mean, I always grade DPS characters really harshly. I'd probably give him, like, a 7. Maybe a 7. 6.5. No, I think a seven's fair. I think a 7 is fair. He does really good damage. It doesn't do anything else. So, uh, let me know what you guys think of this Diablo. I know I didn't use him in his you know best setting for the cleansing debuff. Uh, you could take him into the hero stage and do that. But, you know, there aren't a lot of stages that continually always debuff you. I mean, we did see it a little bit for the beatdown battle. So, I can't say we didn't see it at all. But, his, it's a gimmick. It's a limited turn gimmick that isn't really affected by the game as a whole. And that's just the sad truth. But again, let me know what you guys think of this new Diablo now that you've seen him in action on a couple teams. Has your opinion changed? Let me know in the comments. That's it for me, guys. Take it easy, and I'll see you all later.